Hello there, and welcome to another episode of The Value of Everything. Now, um, my my little way of um, going through all my little show notes um, wasn't very appealing this morning. Um, in fact, I didn't even check them at all. Um, something was just shooting into my mind. I always have this little um, that that morning part where you're just woken up and you're in a daze. You're in between the dream world and the the awake world. Um, just uh, ideas can quite rapidly shoot into your eye, um, to your to your head, and it's quite interesting in that respect. Um, you just like boom, 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 and I think a couple of them uh, hit me. But then the one thing which um, just seemed to be a bit uh, more prevalent than the others was um, how we can become a little bit overprotective. Of our ideas. Now, I know I've mentioned this a little bit before in copyrights, and I think um, something about the future, uh, ideas of the future part two, I think I'm going to a big one about copyright, but I think this is a little bit more of a different subject. Um, there's protectionism, which occurs um, at a personal level, and I as I was um, I was thinking about my son, and then I was thinking about just um, my life in general, and that there has been different stages of my life where I've become a little bit more protective of certain ideas that I've had. Um, and there was definitely was certain phases where I was extremely protective, and it was over certain very non didn't really advantage me in many ways having this knowledge yet I was willing to keep it um, and, I'll, and I'll explain this a little bit um, better and then I'll, I'll just explain how um, I've approached working environments and how it's been a little bit more different to me in the in the realm of ideas now um, when it when I was in my Late teenage years, I was a little bit of a um, dance music fanatic. I was absolutely obsessed by it, especially more so with uh, the French house music scene, Daft Punk, um, anybody that can create that um, really good, deep, um, layered, sidechain compressed um, bass sound was amazing. Any, anybody that could produce the highest amount of sound in the biggest sound in the track was always very amazing to me. Not necessarily that it was always about the biggest sound. could have been the most interesting. And seeing that there wasn't really much in the way of vocals on that, um, it was all about the music and the melodies more so than anything else. I know a lot of dance music can sound extremely repetitive and boring and... Um, just sound like noise, but there is um, definitely in computer-generated music, there is um, the wildest and the craziest ideas which can occur. I'm, I, I'm a big lover of um, rock and indie music as well. Um, there is... Uh, I always think... You always think, oh, all the best songs have already been written before, but I still think there's um, opportunities f um, for that in the future, but... I used to um, I used to go on these big, big um, like farming of song tracks sessions where I would get DJ's set lists um, and I would try and find each one of those songs, try and listen to it beforehand, or um, just go through this massive um, process of just listening to uh, hundreds upon hundreds. I would sit there for hours and hours listening to maybe like 600 tracks in a, in a day just to, out of all of those tracks, 99% um, of them, if not more, would be totally crap. And um, 
just a tiny few, I would think, okay, this is pretty good. Um, and that mythology of just approaching, um, finding good songs and good tracks has sort of um, stuck with me since the dawn of time. There is um, some really interesting things that how, um, and, and it was always about new music. I always wanted to hear and discover something that was new. I wasn't necessarily, in, I, I did, um, new also to me is something like an old track, which I hadn't heard before, which was um, amazing. So that always really appealed to me. I, I, I wasn't really sort of um, set in my ways of just always discovering the same song and just going boom, boom, boom. That's the song I like. That's the genre I like. I'm just going to go out to that kind of music all the time. Um, I was always interested in the new. Um, so, yeah, I was. I would go under these massive farming sessions where I would just continuously roll over loads of songs, discard so many and keeping a few, and um, it would give me a fantastic little um, collection of a few sampled songs and um, I would share it with my friends and um, some, some, some of my friends are really into dance music, some of them not quite so much, more a little bit Indian rock but even so I think a few of them appreciate, even all of them appreciate something at some point in time um, and, but I've got some uh, friends who've got exactly the same sort of almost the same i know exactly how their music tastes work as well which is kind of interesting just the study of just continuously listening to music is is ridiculous and um what is that ridiculous just like um, is it it's just, it was just like a, a passion and a, and a rep repetition and an obsession of mine and um just to listen to a song track i was very attuned to just hearing the, the quality of the production by sampling maybe two points maybe three points of a track if it was if it sounded interesting and there wasn't really much of a beat going on um i might listen to it a little bit more um i would just listen to the break point where you, firstly you kick in with a beat about one minute in you would have this um you would go into the main um chorus melod mel melodic um uh, point where it sort of uh, you break down and then you hit the uh, the main part of the song. Um, then you could go into the middle. And sometimes um, some songs are like a story where they just have different episodes throughout the thing. And they're, they're quite rare. You never usually get them that much. Interest, very interesting to listen to and um, definitely sort of takes me off uh, um, my normal channel of thinking. But usually you get um, about maybe a couple of beat points and then it builds up. Then builds, um, then breaks down, and then uh, then you got another beat point, and then you, that maybe happens two or three times, and there you have your um, your tr dance track, um, and that's generally the way that the uh, computer generated music um, works. Um, so I could sample those three um, points, and with that, I could I could tell by the the beats alone. Um, the quality of the song so I would quickly determine that that person's took a lot of time in trying to compress and make um, certain sounds and um, points of his song really sound good and um, for you to really get that high quality sound in a, in a track it does take you an immense amount of time I, I had approached trying to create my own computer music at some time at some point but um, there was a number of times, but I was, I couldn't actually even get past the beat. I just, I struggled so much with, um, I just had a, a drum beat and the drum beat just sounded just too tinny for my liking. There wasn't any like, oomph, the speaker wasn't moving. I was trying to do certain things. I didn't have the patience to pursue it that in, in much of, a, in, in any kind of depth whatsoever. And um, I gave up and then I just went down the route of where I find a little bit more quicker gratification in the discovery of music rather than um, the production of music. Um, who knows what could have happened, but they, there you go in that respect. But um, 
what getting to my point, I would be a little bit cagey with my music, and I wouldn't necessarily like to share it out too often. Um, spe- uh, specifically, being a DJ, I would be a little bit like, "Oh, you you want that song? Oh, I'll just keep it to myself." It's because because they were my finds, they were my secrets, they were my um, secret weapons um, of the dance floor, um, and I was just a little bit protective of giving away all these little secret bit pieces of of my work all of this hard work that i generated over all this time i didn't really want to just release it just out to pe- out to people just for them to to get so i i had this i i i how many hours of work i got into finding just a few select songs would have is just like um unbelievable now i, I must admit i've i've got all I've got collections of CDs which are in boxes in my garage, which I, I've, I, I've, I bought when, especially when I was um, more early teens. Um, I was buying tons of albums all the time, and I've got a literally, I don't know what to do with them. I, I just don't have the time to just go through all of. Well, I, I could create the time, but then I, I don't think I, I have better time when I could spend time with my son and things like that. So, yeah, there's just so many things and my wife obviously as well and um there's just so many things that like um i i've 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 done spent time over um and now it's just a a little bit disorganized i wish i could just have the time to just go over it now and just sort of get get it into some um i i think i lost the ratings at some point of transferring over the music files it's just it's all a, a complete mess um not a complete mess. I can still find songs, but I know that there's just like good songs that I've got hidden somewhere that I can't really access at any sort of um, great realm, and it's really tricky to find. So um, yeah, there's that's how um, your little squirreled um, away passion can can get you. It can sort of keep you so squirreled that 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 passion just sort of um, dies with you. Um, so that's that's a little message to you now. Um, one thing I did really enjoy, and some of the some of the things I'll look back on in my life that I really sort of find was, um, really, uh, what's the word? I don't know. Just giving happy, really like good time in my friendships was uh, where we would go on little road trips to different destinations. Maybe in the UK, this is with my friends. Or we go to Europe, or we've travelled around America. We're, we're very privileged in that respect. Um, we we all would actually create our own little CDs, and it would be sort of our little signature of our personalities. But obviously, how I would I would be in preparation of that journey. I would create number of CDs, and it, even so, like even nowadays where we have um, MP, MP3s and Bluetooths, it had to be the CD because the CD has. Can, has that character because you can you can connect one track to the to the next um, track after another and it's sort of that there's a there's a there's a story binding which happens between the, the tracks um, which doesn't necessarily work nowadays as much but um, um, there was there was that importance to it as well so I would take my time in burning I, I, I got ridiculous at some point I, I might have burnt about um, 20 CDs just for a road trip once. Um, so a tad bit of an obsession. And um, there'll be little, um, sometimes I would have little comedy ones where I would have these little comedy sketches. Um, there's like certain songs which are, there's a really good song. I, can't, I don't know if you can find it. It's called um, I Don't Want to Go to, uh, I Don't Want to Go to Sleep or I Don't Want to Go to Bed. Yeah, I Don't Want to Go to Bed. Really funny song, um, probably in the 1920s, but it's uh, really funny in that respect. And <laughs> and what what other songs? Um, just like intros to movies, you know, where you get that and just and then you get songs coming in, and it's just just start, I would spend a lot of time just to almost create a little um, soundtrack to our lives as we go through that road trip, and it and it was um, really pleasant, pleasurable to me, and I think um, all the 
everybody else really enjoyed themselves. It wasn't just all all about me either. There was, um, I remember um, some people can bring in, like, I definitely have, um, every single one of my mates has the capacity of bringing me a really good song back, um, which always goes, Ross, you, and they always seem to say, like, oh, Ross, you're gonna, you'll like this song. And invariably I do. Sometimes I'm like, mm, maybe you haven't got quite me there, but invariably I'm like, oh, yeah, that's pretty goddamn good. Um, so there is a beauty of sharing things. And as, as in a certain time of my life, I was just this little squirrel that wanted to keep it, all this knowledge and power to myself over this time. And I felt like... Um, yeah, I just felt like um, I was being abused. I was being like, okay, I've all this effort that I've done is just going to get wasted in a couple of seconds of me just giving uh, giving away all this um, all these songs again. Um, so yeah, it's it's very funny how the mind works and the mind plays tricks on us. Now, as time progresses, um, I'm far more um, of a sharing mentality, always sharing. Now I'm obviously trying to share um, ideas and um, just better ways to enjoy your life and have a better time. I've discovered people that have been excellent at sharing their um, ideas and their knowledge and then deciding that maybe I need to start doing the same thing and helping them out in certain ways of of sharing my life. um, My um, life... uh, experiences and um ideas that have popped into my head is as i say we're, we're getting to a point of the information age and um there's so much to be or to benefit from compared to what what would have been lost in the past where a lot of people, very highly intelligent people that have gone through lives, just kept themselves to themselves, been a quiet man, and then with that, the knowledge dies and they're gone forevermore. So it's very interesting. Um, just a concept, just to think to how to spread your ideas, spread yourself as much as you can before the fuse burns out. Um, it's an interesting concept, and I, I think that's a really good method to to approach things um i would hope that these mp3s would last in the cloud a little bit longer than what i live but who knows what would happen in the future but there is that certain message as well which gets sent out there who knows um so yeah there's there's that mentality to people. Um, there's that mentality of, um, I remember um, not wanting to share friends with other friends. I remember um, being uh, having a mate over once. This I, I'm, I'm an only child, so I don't know whether this um, kicks into you, but I remember having... I know um, going around to other mates' house where um, they've got a younger brother and their younger brother wants to play with us, yet the older brother's like, no, I don't want you to come and play with us. And then there's this little uh, fight which occurs between that two so there is that little there is that possessive nature where you can be unwanting to share but it's the the case of letting go and in, and enjoying the realms of what you share this might seem all very um simple stuff but um i would recommend just looking into your life and just thinking to yourself is there anything that i'm not really sharing that just doesn't really matter too much. I know, and I guess you can start going to the point of just going, what about my money? What, what about that sort of thing? And uh, again, a, a lot of my, I think I've mentioned this before on the um, ideas of the future as well, is that a lot of my purchases um, over time now have been more so a purchase for social reasons than really myself. So I don't know whether I'm just buying things just to make other people happy or just making myself happy, but um, the theory would go is that if I could make other people happy, then then I would be happy myself. So it's a, it's a funny thing um, how the mind works with us. And it, these are not small purchases. I've made very big purchases in that sort of mindset. Um, I used to buy a 
a, a ton of booze um, and I used to live in a really uh, interesting part of um, London and um, I would just get all the mates to come round and we would just absolutely um, get ourselves smashed on all of that booze and then we'll go out afterwards. Now, um, even some of my mates have said, oh, there's a question that we're sort of almost abusing your um, generosity here because you're doing this so much. Um, but it's just, it was something that I enjoyed and I enjoyed um, giving to my friends at that point. I, I mean, I don't know whether the people were abusing my trust or not. It doesn't, didn't really matter. I, I found that there was value in that, the friendship that I gained and uh, it's not, there's no question that all of my friends are highly generous people in themselves. Just so happens that I was in a fairly okay financial position and I chose that spending my money on entertaining my friends was more valid to me than um, buying a watch for myself. Um, so yeah, there's that, there's that realm of thinking. And um, this is where I get to the workplace. So um, in the workplace, uh, I don't know whether you're anything like me, but I'll share this little tiny little information. Um, I make an incredible amount of mistakes. I seem to, um, I seem to, uh, there seems to be this mythology that I approach with things, which eventually... Uh, um, produces somebody that's very sort of um, mindful of all the sort of circumstances which um, problems can occur and um, be quite useful and if there's any problems and problem solving I can sort of attack all most situations but initially when I approach to work to works so I'm almost like I'm always because it's very tricky to understand what can go wrong and what can go right. I'm a, I take a very soft approach to things at first, and problems do occur. I do take these lessons of, on board. Um, I usually try not to be burnt more than once or twice, and then um, I'm usually pretty good. And, I, and then I try and try and work out mythologies of um, not having those um, issues occur again. Um, checklists things like that just um i have all these little approaches to to doing things but i make an incredible make amount of um failures at the start but i do believe that that is one part of the way that i sort of um, understand and learn things better um also another thing that i seem to do which um, i think a lot of people are quite embarrassed about is um i do start to ask questions and simple and silly questions even after i've been told about about what's um happened and Sometimes there's a lot of information that's given to you. Sometimes you're spoken to, and it's, all the information is just not coming to 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 um, into your head from that person. The only way that I find that I'm just actually understanding something is that when I just say, right, let, let me just take it back. So is this how I understand it? Bum bum bum. So I'll just st start to talk and I'll explain it back to them. That's the only methodology that I know that that I can really understand something and break it down into very small chunks first before I get the whole picture um, and that that sort of method usually help puts me in good stead far better than just sort of reciting information which is just being um, told to me um, so yeah so there is that that way um, of knowledge being shared now I found that through my life um, even when I first started work somebody highlighted to me it's really interesting how some Always listen to people when they mention something good about what you do because um, you might discard it and you might think, oh, that's not really nothing to uh, listen to. But it's sometimes um, things do fit into place. Now, I, I remember once, um, and it just sort of clicked with me once, and it's obviously that memory stuck with me, um, but it never really was in the forefront of my mind. But somebody, somebody's mentioned to me before that, um, I could be, I have the potential of being a good teacher. Um, maybe it's true, maybe it's not, but there was that sort of thing that just got kicked into my my head. Um, I do believe, even though I do go on these tangents and blur around, I think I've got a very 
um, easy method to and a way of talking to people and I try and break it down as simply as, as I can so I think I think it can it's possible to to learn off of some little pieces of useful or non-useful information from me um, and also I remember something else which um, somebody mentioned to me recently is that I can uh, I can talk about any subject and go off into a little bit of a tangent and he doesn't know anybody else that has got that ability which um, I do know of people on podcasts that can do this but um, that definitely sort of um, kicked in and I'm like oh okay so how can I use this ability so um, I don't know whether this is keeping to the uh, main show topic but just as a little side note if anybody gives you a little mention of something that you might be good at just remember it because even though it's it could even be used as a joke um there there's something to to study on that and discover on that and um, those passing comments where somebody gives you a little bit of information about yourself um, can be very valuable but um, it's the way that you interpret them and obviously if you start interpreting them every th in, in a negative light you could really diminish your mind but if you could approach it with a positive um, outlook and how you can apply it and I'm sure there's any single thing that um, somebody says that you um, have a, a certain quality in, then I'm sure there's an ability that you can uh, master from that. Um, so, um, in, I remember the, uh, this one little story which I am um, I found not story, but um, this. Uh, this one situation and experience that I was in once where I moved into um, an office environment and um, there's this guy who was um, really, he seemed to be well into his own self-importance and I, because this is a new work environment, new sort of, um, new situation, I just thought that um, this is the way people are in this, this work environment, this is, this is the given. Um, be very aware of that misconception. Um, it's never really the case that these people, um, this is the way that people work. If somebody gives you some kind of negative feeling, I'm pretty sure a lot of other people are experiencing the other the same thing. And I've I've seen that happen so many times where somebody says, "Oh God, that person's so annoying," and you, they it just kicks in, and you you find that, that that person's the same to you as well. Never you find that. That person's just um, uh, horrible and single you out alone. It's usually it's happening to a lot of other people. Um, so yeah, maybe some of the times people can pick on people, but yeah, I'll go back into that anyway. So um, he was showing me um, formulas and Excel, and those true and false, and um, Obviously, this is this is incredible stuff. Um, it's the first time I've ever seen anything in the realms of um, some kind of. I mean, I know formulas isn't really computer language, but some kind of um, ability to program data um, to perform certain acts. Very highly interesting stuff, and obviously, working from um, an if statement where you can see um, the true or false result. Result. Very simple stuff to anybody who's got um, a bit of a um, programming or developing mind um, but it was um, just a little bit tricky to um, just and the way that it was going through it is very just like not giving all the information just this is a little, little, very quick snappy approach to um, training and um, obviously I wasn't like quite sure how it was all being how it was all getting told to me and it was all going a little bit hazy and the the idea of this formula sounded the the word formula sounded complicated in itself and I was like what the what's going on here like this is this is tricky um so yeah so there's there was that little element and then there was the the element where um he would pass on a, like a, a task of a number of um pieces of work and then go right okay um this is blah blah blah, blah and maybe just mention a tiny bit that we need to do this at this point um 
and then uh, walked away and just said, right, there you go. So just leaving me to it. And then obviously what you would expect is me to fail um, because the workload would, would just build up. I wouldn't be able to catch up with what was going on. I wasn't aware of what was going on. I, I wasn't, I was learning for the first time and didn't have any ability to actually um, master the work in, in the first sense. So all of a sudden I just, all of a sudden I looked like I was just being a bit silly, just having this um, work which was, wasn't done. And then the, um, the person who moved on to another job just had to come back and help me out again and be like, oh God, what's going on here? Now, um, as time progressed, I thought I was just, I was being a bit of a fool and it was my problem. But um, as time progressed, I realized that uh, that person really wasn't into um, helping anybody else out too much. And um, I don't know whether it was pure malice on his part to see me fail, but um, I don't think he, I think he was definitely very self-interested more so than helping other people out. Now, I know obviously I mentioned a lot about self-interest, but um, the kind of instant gratification self-interest rather than the long-term self-interest um, and um, it obviously wasn't a pleasant experience on my part and I guess it didn't really it, I don't know whether a manager does see this and I'm sure that any quality manager would see this um, that he gets called back in to see where this person's training um, had been a failure now I always, if I take a position of a managerial position, um, would see that that um, scenario would be um, a failure of training, firstly, because that person was brand new, rather than a failure of one's ability. Um, it would that would that would instantly come to me come to that point now okay maybe that person had to be rushed into that other job and then there's a there's a bigger problem of failure of management but i don't necessarily think it was that case because he could be quite easily pulled back and he could um, help out as um, to get the work back into a manageable state um, but thereafter, doing the role, and I fairly cracked it in in a in a normal sort of uh, working environment. But um, that time that that person could have taken at, at first with explaining things and sitting with me and covering me and seeing certain mistakes that I make and highlight this is where we're going wrong, um, could have solved his problem um, a lot earlier. And could have given him um, a lot more brownie points to other managers because a manager wants to see a good handover of a process. The a manager doesn't want um, somebody to be a very um, neglectful of old processes and um, just just forget about it, wash my hands clean of it, and then moving on. A manager wants to see somebody that's um, got the whole business um, at heart. <laughs> And not in there all just for his own self progression. Um, so there we have certain elements of failure. Now, as time progressed, I know I had a little bit of time in my on my hands in certain points, and I was doing certain reconciliations. Whoa, hey, we're so cool. Um, doing my oh, well, I'm so cool doing my reconciliations. Um, I would just look on the internet to see if there's a better way of doing something and obviously there's this massive um, command program called VBA and you can do all sorts of beautiful things with it and VBA is um, a visual basic for applications it's a Microsoft application on the back of Excel fan really um, really useful tool you just need to nowadays you just need to there's a little secret way yet where you can get the developer tools switched on which um, I think you go through your that big circle bit you click on options and then you can find it through the tool menus but you need to get that developer ribbon button switched on and then once you've got that that's that's like the hardest task of it all 
um, then you can press the record button and you can record all your steps that you make in, say, if you want to um, do this kind of um, reconciliation where you're pasting data in certain manners and it's got to like go through a filter and things like that. Um, you can run a recorder which records all your steps and then um, you save it down as a certain command button or you as a as a as a um, a button that you can just click and um, it will just run that process which you um, just do in a repetitive manner thus freeing up your time to do more useful things um, so I from discovery of learning that and learning the um, mistakes and discovery of just checking out other things not only just doing um recording yourself you can um you can writing in the code and you can read off of the internet of how to do certain things and um over time just through failures and learning about things i i got pretty good with um writing vba and um excel and and just general formulas in excel pretty fancy and that maybe may uh, probably in the whole grand scheme of things i'm probably intermediate but when you go to an office environment and nobody knows anything about the excel you've all, all become all of a sudden become um the king so in uh in the land of the blind the one-eyed man is king sort of thing so um uh, it's, it's definitely a valuable tool to have. Um, and not only did, um, when I had that tool, I kept on pronouncing that my skill was the easiest skill to learn. Um, and everyone was like, oh, what? And um, you generally would go around to the office and I'll be going like, okay, um, you, I can teach you. I'll give me five minutes. I promise you I could teach you everything I, almost everything that I know. And I will explain it to you in a, in a certain mythology in an order. and We'll go through all the steps, and I would sit there and I'd say, "Look, at this, this is easy. Keep keep on mentioning how this this task is not going to be too too hard for you to do. Keep on being encouraging, um, working through the steps, and um, all of a sudden, pretty much half the office um, attains a certain level of um, ability with Excel and um, running macros and um, spreadsheets." And all of a sudden, we're we're all flying, um, and that knowledge share is um, is amazing. And there is this um, uncanny ability where you learn yourself by um, repeating the information. So uh, I've heard in certain studies that the best way of learning is for you to teach. Um, if you keep just knowledge and attain it to your mind, it's not really sort of. Um, it's not really set in, but where you start to talk about it, hence what I do now, um, I definitely think there has been a jump in my my brain power. I don't know whether that's really a, a word to use, but there's definitely been a jump in maybe my, maybe you'll disagree with me, but um, my vocal skills, probably my ability to just go off in a monologue uh, for a long extended period of time, there's been this amazing uh, um, flourish, flourishing of this since I've been just talking over ideas um, in my head. Um, and that's definitely improving the way the sharpness of my mind. Whereby um, you always meant, like, I always like to mention that, say, if you retire at 65 and you once had a fairly demanding job. And now you're just sitting back reading a newspaper in a living room or going fishing the, and you're not really talking to many people and you're not being sharp and being switched on, then there is definitely a diminishing of the, the mind. And with that diminishing of the mind, the health disappears as well. Maybe you're not where that, that walk you was doing beforehand to work. That's not even happening now. And then you're um, becoming more and more... Um, redundant um let alone your job might have been redundant you're you're becoming more redundant that eventually um things do start to break down um but yeah there is there's this amazing benefit from sharing information you can cross the road if you want to that's fine oh, it's very nice when people run across the road when you've stopped for them um so 
Yeah, so when, when you um, just remember where you share this information, um, there's this amazing uh, thing that's happening in your mind where you're improving your ability to keep this knowledge. And then there's this shared thing as well, which occurs. So, so that there was certain people that have, um, did obviously have a little bit more experience as well, and they would share ideas and bat ideas off me. And we would progress even further in what we could create and what we could um, improve on in in our office, and um, that's a beautiful thing. We um, and it's it is really something which you get in return for for working, rather than doing this menial um, reconciliation or, or, of of a job. You you're doing something that's far more interesting in in terms of sharing ideas coming back down i think one of the best times that you can ever have is just like when it gets to the end of the day and you're just sitting around and you're batting ideas off of each other and sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't sometimes people laugh at your ideas but then um it's i think it's always good just just to take it on the chin and then say okay well maybe we can approach it in this manner and um take a little laugh at yourself and then try something else and then or if it is not necessarily like that that idea is a bad idea just keep it keep challenging it from different angles um that's where you get good enjoyment out of work i i I would definitely say and there's there's a challenge and there's that that part where you are trying to uh, um discover the the crossword is that there's a definite enjoyment in that pursuit um but where you're doing that task which you're just trying to avoid failure every day um, I think that's always a tricky um, situation, very depressing situation to be in all the time. Um, yeah, so try try and take steps in how you might have certain abilities and certain qualities and how you can share them with other people. Um, you may be certainly rich in certain resources and how you could share those resources with people um and um probably the most important and valid um things that we have is the ideas that set in our minds and how we can share them with other people so if you have certain ideas of how the world could work and how things could be run in the future and if you could share that those ideas with other people and potentially work out a way of creating value for other people which could be monetized then you are in a beautiful state of um of life i would expect so yeah get sharing get sharing and um remember sharing doesn't necessarily need to be your money, your possessions, it's, yeah, it's all sorts of things. Your knowledge, your time. Um, the more that we share, the, I think, the more that I think I've benefited from. I, I've, all the time that I've shared with people where I've done something which, um, I don't necessarily want to do, but I go down to the park and see other people, or well, my son's enjoyment of going down the park and stuff like that. I've, I've really enjoyed it. At first, nothing I've I've shared at first. I'm I'm thinking to myself, "Oh, this is great fun, isn't it? Just giving away this, my time to do this and the, all this, that, and the other." But then, obviously, obviously, like especially with your own son, you're going to be like, "Right, okay, well, this little man needs to run out. This little man also <laughs> needs to have a little bit of fun, just not being set in this um, house all day." And um, there is some amazing pleasures which can be had from. Um, sharing. Um, yeah, so hopefully you've enjoyed my uh, what I've shared with you guys. Um, I've heard of different studies where, um, especially in charity senses. Oh my god, I've got too many. I can't part to save my life sometimes, even though I've got Parkinson's. Apologies for that. Um, I'm going to try and wrap this up, this uh, podcast, without you waiting for me to park. Um, so, yeah, I, I have heard that there's certain studies of um, happiness where we... Oh, 
where we um where we buy to buy items and um obviously material goods and we find them pretty fascinating at first and then we just discard uh, and then we get quite used to it and then it's not really that interesting anymore however um where we are charitable um and remember charity starts in different and many ways um where we are charitable and we um provide um certain things maybe our time our knowledge or our money to people it definitely sticks in our heads and there's a definite reward element to that um, which give us gives us everlasting happiness and when you're on that little deathbed scenario you're not going to think about how big your mansion is but how much how many good things that you've done in the world um, and how much your life was um, put forward in a good sense rather than uh, how much how selfish you've been and what you've done because then you're going to get that oh um what have i done rather in comparison to yes i've fucking nailed it in my life so um that gives you some um, food for thought i know sometimes people will go okay well what the fuck am i going to do i don't even know anything um i i can promise you now um uh with you just even listening to me you've got infinite capacity to do a many number of things and i can guarantee you that even from the the worst disabilities you can re-emerge with some fantastic ideas and how to re revolutionize the world um and to make this uh, world a better place so um with that get your little notepad out and start writing down things what you can do to change and <laughs> just keep it keep yourself a very short list and um not to change but maybe how what, what things you could you could share um maybe share just being kind share your virtues that's probably a good place to start um get yourself the list of virtues out and then see how you can flex your virtue muscles um i remember mentioning yesterday with cecil the lion um remember one thing i was i was talking about how to monetize um his uh like um the, the life of a species and stuff like that and I, th I think there's this little kick in with people thinking okay well everything has to have this money element to it just for its own survival and how that's the profit motive but remember there's a big profit in virtue and virtue is like kindness um being a, a good person so there is definite value from that if you think of customer service cu um being kind and nice and um being a beautiful person um get, is is rewarded with a, a value um a monetary value so it's not this particular root of all evil there is a definite beneficial point of applying virtues in our lives so just remember that before um i get all the pitchforks um surrounding my house late at night um but yeah thank you very much for your time i do hope you get some crumbs of useful information from this podcast and we shall speak again soon well not not really you but i guess you could shout back at me in the podcast anyway all right thanks for your time goodbye